everyone, my name is Jessica Hanley and I'm here with Dr. Marco Garza from the Management Department in the, the School of Business. Um, and we're here to talk about uh, maximizing face time, right, in our classes. What can you tell us about segmenting lectures, um, something like a, a micro lecture format? Um, how does it benefit the, the online and the face-to-face -face environments? I think first, the, the faculty, the, the facilitator needs to understand you can segment your content and the 90-minute session you're gonna have to make choices out of that 90-minute worth of content or maybe not even 90 minutes but just content in general a modular section you're gonna go through that and say what of this content within the particular module first you're gonna have to look at your modules but then within a given module what are things that can be taken offline? What are things that need to be taken in the classroom? That the, the, the question you're gonna ask yourself is, if what I'm talking about, does it need to be, is what I'm having them think about or content they're interacting with, do they have to do that in a collaborative mode? Mm -hmm. If the answer to that is yes, then you pull that off into the classroom. If not, then there, you've discovered or uncovered a wonderful opportunity to chunk or segment that piece. Okay. Uh, and literally that could be a, uh, a few things, a small section of the chapter to read, and now you're given a quick three to four minute overview of that content. I say three to four minutes because three to four minutes easily when you're talking can turn into 10 minutes. So, right. <laughs> so, be, so be disciplined with yourself and say, I've got three to four minutes knowing that this will probably end up being about eight to 10 minutes of content. Perfect. And now just kind of divide that up, do some knowledge checks in between there. Um, when I say knowledge checks, that could be a, a small little exam, a small little quiz. Um, there's all different types of techniques you can use to just kind of do a quick little check for understanding at the end. So there's a lot of techniques that I'm sure we can get into later. But I think that's the key is knowing and giving yourself permission to segment um, some of your content. What, what experience do you have with the micro lecture? I mean, has it, has it changed anything about the way you approach lecturing and um, yeah. activities? Yeah, so it, it requires a lot of discipline. Okay. Uh, it requires a lot of discipline on behalf of the facilitator and before you start with the delivery, you really have to look at the design. So bad design leads to poor delivery. Right. Or the absence of thoughtful design will force you to just get up there and just go in lecture mode and you're just on and on and on. And it students will, will easily take a mental vacation right. and I'll, I'll remember when it's, ends, when it's done and I'll, and I'll leave. So, so I think that's the critical piece is knowing when to, um, knowing the importance of design, the, the role design plays in good delivery. And what does that mean? Knowing how to uh, chunk your information and your content prior to delivery. If you're gonna try to deliver and do that on the fly, sometimes you have to, that's a bad, uh, that's a bad recipe for you just kind of going on and on. So what is it that, what is the, the best tip that you can offer about maximizing the, that face-to-face -face time? I think it's, it's important to, to make a distinction that you, you're, you're, there's continuous interaction with the content. It just so happens to have two circles. You have individual interaction where the student is interacting with content online, and then there's also the traditional class and there's an opportunity to look at that course within those two circles to, to realize it's a continuation of a conversation, not two separate conversations, I think is critical. Right, and that's one of the things that we, we try to get away from is, is translating a traditional class to hybrid doesn't mean that it becomes a course and a half, right. that you make sure that it's integrated throughout. Um, so if we talk about something like having them read online, what would you suggest uh, for an activity or something in face-to-face -face environment? Sure, I think when you're when you're thinking about it from that context, I think it's it's perfect for small group discussions. The mistake I think that a faculty can make is is read the material and now in class I'm just going to continue to resummarize what you've already read. You missed an opportunity to allow students to engage with the content, so you want to cherish that 
in classroom time and use it as is intended, the question you're going to ask yourself is whatever the content you're talking about or had them read offline, does it require that to take the next step in learning to be done in a collaborative way? If it does, then you're going to think through some, some strategies and tools to help with maybe uh, setting up a really good small group discussion. Um, what are some of those strategies and tools? Yeah, absolutely. So, so a small group discussion works perfect there. So you'll have a reading and then you're going to uh, design an activity or a small, small group breakout sessions with groups of students. Maybe they're already in teams. And even if you don't have teams, you can still put them in small groups just on the spot very quickly. The key though, the planning, the, the instructor has to have some, put some thought into what are the questions that I'm going to ask them to collaborate on based on some previous content or material, whatever it is, a reading, a video, whatever, an exam, whatever it was, and think through some very well thought out discussion questions that I'm going to have them discuss almost very quickly when we jump into the classroom setting. So that is a golden hour. You need to protect that time. And the question you're going to ask yourself is, if is what we're talking about, does it require collaboration? If the answer is no, then push that back to online. And you can keep that collaborative online, or it can be individual online. So you want to protect that time that you have in the classroom for collaborative modes. And so I think small group discussions is a great way to start that. Um, the first part is understanding what are the discussion questions that are going to be well thought in advance that I'm going to ask them to talk about in class. That's part one. Do you have any tips on uh, creating these really good discussion questions? Um, I would say the, the art is in the facilitation. Okay. So part of it is the thought process is what are the discussion questions? They're not it's not a list of 20, it's literally just maybe three or four that I've thought through uh, and maybe break them up into A, B, C. So this group will talk about question set one, question set two, so we're not all talking about the same question. And I think a, a good faculty, uh, a good facilitator I should say, has to really look at their facilitation skills and, and it's not just I'm here waiting while you talk, it's how do I s interact with those small groups as they're discussing and then um, assigning a spokesperson at the end and then helping him or her have a good debrief to the rest of the class. So that could be a small discussion where they now, okay, I need a spokesperson from that group. Uh, if you want to take it to another level is they could literally, the other technique that I've used that works very well is in those small group discussions, they just have flip chart paper mm -hmm. and they're writing their comments on the flip chart paper. You want to take it to another level. I've seen some instructors use, uh, the students will have a laptop or one note or something and they're actually typing their notes and so part of it is working on an assignment that goes immediately into a discussion board. Okay. I've seen that happen as well. So there's a lot of different gradual Levels sophistication, that you can use, yeah. yeah, sophistication levels. You can take it uh, one step at a time. But I think a great starting point is small group discussions. That's awesome. That was one of the things that I used to do in my classroom. Is if I had the students um, work on a writing assignment, I would always have them discuss it beforehand, and that helped the the kids who were unsure of themselves. That helped the kids who were learning English and all of that really vocalize and kind of commit to an idea and hear the perspectives of others and then be able to write a lot more fluently about something. Absolutely, and it, and it, it encourages more people to talk in a less threatening way because some people don't like to talk in front of a 30-person class. Me. Right? <laughs> right, right? But you know what? I can talk in a group of five people yeah. and some of my contribution comes out. And so that's the starting point. And a good faculty slash facilitator who is highly engaged and going to those different pockets will find those individuals who say, hey, you know what, that was a great point you brought up. Tell you what, I'd love for you to bring that point up when we kind of come back to the class. And so you almost encourage and give them some per encouragement and permission to bring that thought up where normally if it was a group of 30, 60 students, they never would have dreamed of speaking up at all. I'll just sit here and say nothing. And once the time passes, I'll leave. And you miss an opportunity to help that student stretch a skill set that maybe they didn't think they had, but they just the format and the design of the 
but the activity didn't lend itself to that.